Good morning, guys. Good morning, Trinity. Uh, this is Mike, teaching pastor at the church. So it is actually about 2 p.m. for me. I'm very committed to reading the morning prayer in the morning. I'm committed to authenticity with the daily office, but tomorrow morning I'm going to be um, talking to somebody over Zoom pretty early. So I, I am committed to this, but I'm not 5 a.m. committed to this. Um, so I am pre-recording tomorrow's daily office. I hope this has been an encouragement to your faith during these trying times. I think things are going to get um, significantly worse in our area, but my, my prayer is that the Lord will be merciful on, on our community and on our church. Um, continue to take the, the social distancing seriously. Wash hands, do what the CDC is recommending, um, but also don't panic. I think that there are two two dangers in this moment and uh and the panic is is a big part of of what's taking place um so i'm certainly not someone who thinks this is a hoax i think this is real um i think basically everybody does now even those who originally were were saying it wasn't um so don't don't mishear me at all i think that the, we need to take the social distancing seriously in this time and so i encourage you to do that but also I encourage you to stand on the fact that God is sovereign. Um, pay attention also to, to um, experts who are, are, um, who are telling us not to panic, that, that we need to kind of like wait this one out and, and be calm. See this as a moment to distinguish um, yourself as a Christian. I, I think in, in so many ways, this is a moment for us to adorn the name of Christ, to live for the glory of God and the life of the world, um, especially in the midst of, of panic and in the midst of contagions. Um, so that's all the, all the editorializing from, from me today. Um, let me jump into the daily office. So here, here's the opening. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Mark 8, 34. Let's confess our sins against God and against our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Hear the words of Psalm 69, or rather a portion of Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen up to my neck. I am sinking in deep mire, and there is no firm ground for my feet. I have come into deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. I have grown weary with my crying. My throat is inflamed. My eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O oh God of Israel. Surely for your sake have I suffered reproach, and my shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind, and your great compassion turn to me. 
Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of my enemies deliver me. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all in your sight. Reproach has broken my heart and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I could find no one. They gave me gall to eat, and when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. As for me, I am afflicted and in pain. Your help, O God, will lift me up on high. I will praise the name of God in song. I will proclaim his greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen, more than bullocks with horns and hooves. The afflicted shall see and be glad. You who seek God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy. And his prisoners he does not despise. Let the heavens and the earth praise him and the sea and all that moves in it. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have it in possession. The children of his servants will inherit it. And those who love his name will dwell therein. At this point, typically in the morning prayer service, they, they sing the Gloria Patri. From now on, when I do these, I'm just going to speak the words of that because it's just too good to pass up. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen and amen. Hear the reading from the Old Testament, Exodus 1, 6 through 22. Then Joseph died and all his brothers and that whole generation. But the Israelites were fruitful and prolific. They multiplied and grew exceedingly strong so that the land was filled with them. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pitom and Ramses, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service and mortar and brick and every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God they did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews, throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. This is the word of the Lord. Next, the reading from the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 26. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if an ear were to say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable... We clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members don't need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, 
that there may be no dis- dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. This is the word of the Lord. And finally, the reading from the Gospel, Mark eight twenty-seven to chapter 9, verse 1. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. He asked them, Who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You're the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about this. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers... Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. Those who want to lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can I give in return for their life? What can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of them, the Son of Man, will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels." And he said to them, truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. This is the word of the Lord. If you know it, recite with me the Apostles' Creed, or if if you've got one of the apps open, either the Daily Office app for for Apple users or the Mission St. Clair app for for Android users, I encourage you to, to read along the Apostles' Creed with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, meaning the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, Say with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this point, we transition into the prayers. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world evermore, give us this bread, that we may live, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation, in their work and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, who divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, Drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now at this point, there, there's sort of a rotating group of, of intercessions. So I just read is basically the same almost every every day there's generally a a prayer uh, that has to do with the church calendar and then there's a prayer for mission and then um, a prayer for peace of some kind or or obedience so now I'm, i'm transitioning into what rotates daily the intercession section 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And our prayer for the armed forces. Almighty God, we commend your gracious care in keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we have a prayer for the conservation of natural resources. Almighty God, in giving us dominion over things on earth, you made us fellow workers in your creation. Give us wisdom and reverence, so to use the resources of nature that no one may suffer from our abuse of them, that generations yet to come may continue to praise you for your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this point, for the, the prayer of self-dedication, I'm going to read a, a prayer attributed to St. Francis. We don't know for sure if he actually wrote this. Uh, he probably did, but no one can be sure. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And finally, the, the thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us, and to all, who, all whom you have made, we bless you for your creation, preservation, all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. I receive this benediction. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks, guys, for joining me uh, this morning for the, the daily office. Again, this is going to be something I do Monday through Friday. Um, I hope, to, I hope you guys are, are able to, to tune in for, for the different service elements happening on Sunday, and I encourage you, stay connected to community. Um, we remain grounded in God through, through three main ways, and that's through prayer, scripture, and, and community. So uh, make it a point to, to stay connected to one another through digital means, through phone calls. Um, yeah, love you all. Hope you're well. The blessings of Christ be upon you.